back streets back all right i'm back um today we are going to do the x files season six episode field trip um this is the episode most people in the fandom know of as Mulder and skelly go on a trip a shroom trip but not that kind um actually it would be pretty awesome to see Mulder and skelly go on a shroom trip the good kind they go on a very bad one. <laughs> um, so when I was a baby and I was 14 years old, I was a very sheltered baby. And I watched this episode for the first time and I thought, why is it called Field Trip? I had a very much a uh, Roadrunner's moment <laughs> where I couldn't figure out why it was called that. Well, it's because they're in a field and they have a bad trip. So, um... There you go. There's a, there's a summary of the episode. So, um, this is an episode that very much goes under the radar. Um, it is co-written by John Sheban, uh, Vince Gilligan, and Frank Spotniz. Some of those names might sound familiar to you. Uh, here's a good rule of thumb when you're watching The X-Files. Um, if you want some really great, hard-hitting episodes with lots of MSR character moments, watch episodes written by those three. If you want some shitty, shitty, convoluted shit, watch it by uh, a man. I'm not going to say his name, but let's just say his last name rhymes with farter. <laughs> um, anyway, um, this is an episode that flies under the radar. Um, it not only has some of the best Mulder and Scully character and relationship development moments, but it has, I believe, a very meta tone where you kind of see how the writers and how the series views these two characters. And I'll talk about that at length in a moment. So, um, the stomach bug has found me again. I'm doing a little bit better, so I'm not drinking anything boozy today. I am drinking a cherry Dr. Pepper. Cheers! Two good trips. So the episode starts out with um, Wallace and Angie Schiff. And they are 90s generic couple. <laughs> Even down to Angie's perm. Which I think every woman in 1999 had. And um, they come back into their hotel room from a hard day of hiking in the woods. And uh, they very successfully channel... Uh, me and my spouse when we go off on a hiking adventure uh, my spouse comes in from this fucking nine hour hike he's enthused ready to conquer the world and I am like I'm about to die <laughs> um, I'm like I need a shower and a bed so um, Angie's like completely done she gets in the shower and um, she's washing her hair and uh she sees, uh, where the water is running on the shower tiles, she sees green goo dripping from the shower tiles. And that's right! This is an X-Files episode where you think it's reality and it's not. Um, the X-Files has a kind of, um, checkered, uh, <laughs> a kind of, uh, checkered, uh, uh um, what is the word? A reputation for uh, portraying this well or not well. Via Negativa probably does it the best. Um, I'm going to review Via Negativa. It's a season 8 episode. It's one of my favorite episodes. This one does it pretty good. Um, this effect with the green goo will come back in a very, very hokey way. <laughs> but right now, it's very foreboding. Like, um... You get this ominous sense that not everything is right. And um, I do enjoy when the X-Files doesn't just hit you over the head with the solution. Like, it it leads you on. And this is one of the ones that does it. So, um, Angie crawls into bed with her husband. And uh, she says, I just want you to hold me. Uh, Field Trip also has, I think, some of the best foreshadowing of any X-Files episodes. Um, 
as I mentioned in the in the uh, in the review before on Our Town, um, this is the this is a penultimate episode. Um, I'm reviewing a lot of penultimate episodes uh, in a season. Is this because I like the word penultimate? Probably. Uh, <laughs> but um, I did talk about how um, like these penultimate episodes in a season will usually foreshadow not only what is to come in the uh, season finale, but what is to come in the lives of these of our hero and heroine. Field Trip does that, I think, better than any other episode of The X-Files, any other penultimate season episode of The X-Files. So, um, Angie asks Wallace to hold her, and this reminds me of the time in uh, Requiem, and then the time in Plus One where Scully asks Mulder to hold her. Um, and when we review those two moments, we'll, we'll talk about them. Star-cross lovers. Gotta love it. So, um, then you see them cuddle up in bed, and then it kind of pans out from the motel room bed, and it shows their two skeletons lying in a field. Oh, shit. That ain't good. So, um... We have the title sequence. We're at FBI headquarters. And, um, Mulder is, um, showing Scully these slides. It's kind of cute at the beginning. The slide, like, won't focus on the, the bare wall, <laughs> which is kind of a, it's kind of poking fun at, like, Mulder's little slide presentations, which I love. You, know, you can tell this was written by Vince Gilligan. So, um, Scully, he's like, uh, hey, these two people went missing in North Carolina, and he's like, this is where the brown mountain lights are, and that's where they'll, these lights will, like, flash a, a mountain peak for whatever reason. And, um, Scully, <laughs> nobody throws shade like Dana Catherine Scully, she says, um, so, uh, the, he's like, she's like, do you believe these are UFOs? And he's like, oh yeah, these are extraterrestrials. And she's like, so they have nothing better to do than to flash a mountain peak in North Carolina for 700 years. <laughs> it reminds me of the um, scene in All Things where Mulder wants to go see the crop circles. And Scully's like, uh, they were farmers who just happened to ace geometry. <laughs> and I mean, um, nobody throws, nobody slings shade like Dana Scully. So then... Mulder has a little goddamn hissy fit. And oh boy, Mulder's famous for his hissy fits, but this one particularly pisses me off. So, he tells Scully, he's like, how many times have I been wrong? He's just clutching his pearls. And I want to say 1% of the time. <laughs> like, I want Scully to, like, grab him by his collar and shake him and say... We are getting, first of all, Scully's the reason the X-Files have come this far. Do you really think Mulder could have made it this far on his own? He couldn't have, okay? Second, whatever headway is made in these cases, Scully is doing all the goddamn police work, all right? And she is solving the majority of the cases on intuition alone. Mulder is right maybe 1% of the time. Because it's, it's like I said in um, Our Town. Or like in the Jersey Devil. I'm like, he could be right about these supernatural occurrences. But where's the substantial evidence? Like, where is it? Okay, I don't see it. Do you see it? I don't see the substantial evidence for these claims of the supernatural. Like, Scully's explanations of science are just as plausible. Alright? And that's the thing the show never gives us. Alright, show, you want Mulder to be right all the fucking time? Give us substantial evidence to what he's claiming, alright? And then I'll believe his little case. But anyway, Dana Scully's not like me, and she has the patience of a goddamn saint. So instead of tearing homeboy a new asshole, she goes with him to North Carolina. <laughs> and, um... I watched the Andy Griffith show uh, last night. Andy Griffith show is one of my favorite shows ever. And uh, this very much reminds me of the uh, North Carolina sets on the Andy Griffith show. 
<laughs> I'm like looking at it and I'm like, hmm, North Carolina looks a whole lot like uh, Southern California. <laughs> so um, they go to uh, this pathologist and uh, they look at the shift's remains. And uh, Scully sees a green goo on the bodies. And she's like, what's this? And the pathologist is like, oh, is it bog sludge? She's like, no, I don't think so. She's like, this probably had something to do with why they died. And I want to reach through the screen. And I want to grab Mulder and shake him and say, look at your wife. She just solved the case, motherfucker. Like, oh, but you're always right. Uh, you're always right, Mulder. I understand. Yeah, you're always right. Fuck him, okay? <laughs> this is... I, I don't... Okay, I'm rating Mulder in this episode. He's uh, eight, okay? He's not as shitty as uh, Never Again Mulder, but he's getting there. He's getting there. So, um... And again, like, Mulder turns to go. And he, like, turns back to Scully, and he's like, are you coming? And it's like, dude, didn't you just get done saying, like, how you're right all the time, and how her theories don't make sense? Like, yeah, couldn't you just take this one alone, dude? I'm sorry. Season 6 Mulder, if someone pushed him in front of a bus, I wouldn't give a fuck about him, okay? <laughs> so, um, Scully stays back to, like, examine the bodies and Mulder goes off into the hills and he's walking along with his terrible season six hair okay <laughs> like uh what is it the sex files podcast was saying uh their empathy for Mulder lowers according to his hairstyle <laughs> I, I can see that yeah so um Mulder's walking through the hills, and he sees Wallace Schiff just running around, and he's like, hey, come back. He chases him. Mulder sees a very small cave leading into the hillside, and Mulder uh, ignores the first, one of the first rules of adventuring in the outdoors. Never go into a cave that has not been explored before. Okay, there's a little pro tip. Don't ever do that. I want you to guess what Mulder does. He goes in the cave. <laughs> but yeah, he's always right, and he can handle things on his own. So he goes in the cave, and um, he sees Wallace Shift. Wallace Shift is freaking the fuck out. And he tells Mulder, in so many words, that he has been abducted by aliens. Now... I'm thinking of the episode Eve in season one, and also in uh, Jose Chung's From Outer Space, where, first of all, I like episodes where, like, it's set up to be aliens, and it's not. And it's interesting to see Mulder get played every time. Like... This man touts himself as being the most paranoid, cautious person, but he's, Mulder is trusting to the point of being gullible. Like, in Eve, you see these eight-year-old girls just play Mulder, he's, and they don't even really try, they're just like, uh, he's like, did you see a light? And they're like, yeah, we saw a light. And he's like, oh my god, did you see, like, these, uh, these, these strange men? They're like, yeah, we saw that. And he just believes it. Like, and, okay, and it's annoying as hell. But yeah, he's always right, right? I'm sorry, I will not let this go, okay? <laughs> so, um, that's the way this plays out, as you will see. Um, this is not what we think it is. Anyway, there's a bright light, and Angie is returned. She's freaking the fuck out. And, uh, these two people, what, who we assume are the ships, um, Mulder's like, I saw, we, Mulder, uh, Scully and I saw your remains, and they're like, yeah, the aliens placed them there. And, it's so strange, like, me as a viewer, I can see right through it. Okay, like, even the first time when I watched this, when I was a dumb little 14-year-old baby, I would, I was like, this isn't right, like, 
They're telling Mulder everything he wants to hear. And Mulder just accepts that. Like, he does not question it. And, like, there's a difference between believing and just being as gullible as fuck. And Mulder is gullible. Alright, he's constantly misled. And he allows himself to be misled to the detriment of him and especially to Scully. So, but I mean, these people are telling him everything he wants to hear. And um, he looks on the back of Angie's neck. She has the scar that Scully has from her implant. And Mulder never stops to question it. And, well, I mean, he does sometimes, but it's very half-hearted. And, and it's like, he'll kind of question, and he's like, but wait, and they'll steer him right back on course. So then there's another huge flash of light, and Wallace is like, I'm running, and Mulder's like, I'm going to go towards the light, and I'm reminded of uh, A Bug's Life, <laughs> where, um... There's the, the bug zapper and the mosquito, and the, the mosquitoes are going, the moths are like going towards it. And one's like, hey man, don't go towards the light. And he's like, but it's so pretty. And then you just hear a brr and he bam. <laughs> a bug's life. Pixar's a bug's life. One of my favorite movies. So, um, Mulder goes into the light the same way he does in goddamn Requiem. <laughs> and, uh, did I say this man's gullible? He's gullible. And, um... Then you just kind of get this time skip. It's kind of cool. You see the light from the, what we're assuming is a UFO, go into like, it's like shining on the number 42 on his apartment. That's some, that's some really clever uh, screenwriting right there. Uh, cinematography. So um, you see Scully show up at his apartment and uh, <laughs> like he opens the door and She's like, man, you ditched me in North Carolina. I don't know why she's so surprised. I mean, she's been putting up with this behavior for six years. And uh, Mulder's like, come in and meet the shifts. And she and Angie and Wallace shift are sitting there. And she's like, uh, you guys are dead. <laughs> They're like, nah, we're not. So then uh, Mulder's like, I want to show you something, Scott. <laughs> The X-Files has some of the most unintentionally hilarious moments, I think, in television history. He takes Scully into his bedroom. And <laughs> there's a baby alien there! <laughs> That's right. Mulder has gone full-on E.T. here. Uh <laughs> and I remember watching this with my brother, John, when I was 14. And we were like, what? What is Mo what is Mulder's plan here? Like what what is he gonna do? Like what's he gonna feed it? Is he gonna take it for walks? Like are we gonna have like a, a Lilo and Stitch montage? What what the f exactly is going to happen here? So like but like Mulder, the brilliant FBI agent, like what are you gonna do with this thing, Mulder? Anyway, um Scully starts crying, and um, I want to talk about the difference between Jillian and David's acting in this episode. <laughs> you know how I said at the end of Malagro that some of the worst acting from David Duchovny I've ever seen? Well, I take that back. This is the worst acting from David Duchovny I have ever seen. In this entire episode, especially towards the end, his face looks like a rock. And I'm like shouting at the TV. I'm like, just show some expression, man. Just put half of your ass into it, okay? And I think it's because the way the story is framed as like from Mulder's perspective and then from Scully's perspective, like it's day and night. Like there's Jillian cry on command Anderson and then there's David rock face to Coveney. Like... <laughs> It's day and night. Like, holy hell, his acting in this episode is so fucking bad. 
Like, I have no words for it. It's just terrible. Okay, like, I know you want out of the franchise, dude. But you know what? Jillian wanted out of the franchise, and she carried it on her back for two seasons. And you know what? She still is. I mean, new fans are being drawn into the fandom because of Jillian. Sorry, David Stanch. I love you. So, I'm feeling very sassy today. So, um, the, uh, Scully starts crying. She's like, I can hear this thing in my head. And Mulder gets back in his apartment, and then he just stops for a minute to consider that maybe things aren't so right. And you know what snaps him out of it? Scully telling him he's right. <laughs> Which, you know, I kind of think Mulder gets off on her questioning him. Because, and it's, like, I know Mulder's a big fucking hypocrite. He's probably the biggest one of all time, but like, at the beginning of this episode, he's like, uh, when have I all, when have I been wrong? Why can't you just say I'm right sometimes? And then, like, he literally loses his sanity when she tells him he's right. So, you be the judge of that. So then, uh, Mulder's like, Scully's telling me I'm right. Something must be wrong. And that's right, Mulder. You're on a bad shroom trip. <laughs> You know how we had that very nice, subtle effect of the green goo, like, dripping down the shower at the beginning of the episode? Well, now it just takes a hard left into Obviousville, and we get some of the worst late 90s CGI in the show. <laughs> um, excuse me. Scully says, Mulder, we're being digested. And then her face melts in a puddle of green goo, and it looks pretty crappy. So, you know what? You win some, you lose some. Oof. Wrist is cramping. So then, um, you, uh, get to Skelly's perspective. And, um, she's looking at the body. She tries to call Mulder. She can't get him on the phone. Again, um, I can understand, Skelly, you being surprised in the Jersey Devil, but, like, You've been with this motherfucker for six years, man, okay? Like, just, you should know by now. So, um, she's like, uh, hey, we gotta get a talk screening of this green goo to the pathologist. And she's like, and can I borrow your truck? Next scene, Scully driving this old Dodge truck like a hard ass <laughs> up the hills. And, um, she gets to the cave, she starts shouting for Mulder. I take a drink. Mulder and Skelly shouting for each other. Mmm. It's so good. So then, um, she gets to the cave. She sees Mulder's footprints. And she noticed them going inside of the cave. But Skelly's a smart baby, and she understands the first rule of outdoor adventuring. If you don't know what's inside a cave, don't go in it. <laughs> so she turns around and goes back. And I think this is a metaphor for something, and I'm still trying to figure out exactly what it is. So, she goes back. Uh, her and the pathologist are, like, searching the hills for Mulder. And they find a body. Uh, cut to the morgue. And this is very reminiscent of Paper Hearts, where Mulder's, like, looking at the corpse of the little girl. Um... It's, it's even the same shot, like, you're kind of, like, looking up at Scully, and she's, like, looking down at what we're assuming is Mulder's corpse. Um, the pathologist comes back, and he's like, I'm sorry, you know, this is your partner. Um, and he's like, I'm so sorry. And this is where the episode gets a little tricky. So, in... When, oh, and I need to backtrack and say that they stepped on some mushrooms going up the hill, and the mushrooms popped open and sent their little spores out. I'm assuming they infected Mulder and Scully somehow, and they um, caused them to have these hallucinations, which led them inside of this cave, and the fungus's digestive juices, which is the green goo that we found on the shifts at the beginning, 
is slowly digesting them, stripping the flesh from their bones. <laughs> so, um, so when Mulder has his shroom trip, his best dream comes true, okay? Um, he has substantial proof, and I mean the substantial proof, of extraterrestrial life, okay? Yay, Mulder, you're finally right about something. Yay, that's what you wanted. Then I'm never letting that go. When Scully has her trip, it's her worst nightmare. Mulder's dead. She's left to pick up the pieces on her own. And from the time I was a 14-year-old baby, I've thought about this a lot. And I've heard some interesting theories. Um, one person on Twitter was saying recently that, um, like Mulder his perspective seeking out extraterrestrial life will lead him to this grander and Scully only sees it leading them both into darkness and death and that's a pretty good theory I like that um but I've thought about it a lot and I believe that it's a very meta reason of how this series views Mulder versus Scully so I was re-listening to the Sex Files podcast, like, and I came across this, um, quote at random, um, and they said, if Scully is to survive, it will be for Mulder. If Mulder is to survive, it will be because he is the quote, and I'm putting huge quotation marks, the chosen one. And I believe this is how the writers, the series, and especially Chris Carter, views Mulder and Scully. They're viewing Mulder as this Christ-like figure, okay? So, and they are viewing Scully as, like, his support person. And I hate to say it, but his accessory. Like, so... Everything that Scully does, and we see this throughout the show, from Scully's absence of a personal life to her uh, absence of exploring her sexuality, everything she does is for him. And that's because that's the way the series views her. Like, she is this woman who is to support this man who will be the chosen one. And, like, it is the most gross thing. And then they view Mulder as this, this person with agency. Uh, he can have a life. He can have friends. He can have dreams and aspirations separate from her. Scully can never have anything separate from him. And it is a disgusting and sexist view of these characters. But anyone who wants to say that Chris Carter or this show is not misogamistic or sexist, go right ahead, okay? Because you're wrong. So that was that's my explanation of that. Scully's freaking the fuck out. Um and it's kind of interesting like people are throwing her these theories that she first suggested to Mulder, which I think is just adding insult to injury. Because, first of all, those were just her initial, like, theories, okay? That's not what she stuck with, okay? It's her, um, investigating the green goo. Like, that is what broke the case wide open. And I think it's cruel for them to, like, say, oh, yeah, he was killed in, like, a ritualistic way. Like, they're saying, like, oh, ha, ha, look, Scully's wrong all the time. But, like, no, she's actually right all the time. And it's, and I also, like, Scully sees the holes in this story immediately. Like, it took Mulder fucking hours to figure it out. Scully's like, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this isn't reality. And I love that. Like, and again, she's doing it on sheer intuition. So, they go to Mulder's awake. <laughs> And, um, like, all these people in his apartment, I love the joke that comes up. They're like, who are these people? 
<laughs> Scully immediately gets suspicious. She's like, Mulder doesn't have this many friends. This can't be true. <laughs> and I love that joke. Um, my three sons, the lone gunmen, are there. And uh, they're telling Scully, like, we'll get the bastard who did this. Which is the same thing Skinner said. I also want to say um, another thing that makes Scully suspicious is Skinner telling her she did a good job. <laughs> She's like, someone telling me I did a good job? Okay, this isn't real. <laughs> like, poor Dana Scully. God. Her, just, uh, there's a, a vine where, um, and it's like the X-Files' is vines, and it's like, Scully's looking at God, and she's like, please, God, can I just have a good day? And God's looking down, he's like, nah, honey, you're not gonna get it. <laughs> like, Scully can have no joy in life. So, she's at the wake. She starts freaking the fuck out. She starts yelling. And this is foreshadowing of, um, when Mulder gets abducted at the end of season seven, and Scully's left to pick up the pieces on her own and she's not just putting her own life but the life of her unborn child at risk to find him but you know uh all oh, these people who play the trauma olympics with Mulder and scully and they say Mulder suffered more you know because he actually died at the end of season seven i'm like you know what Mulder took a dirt nap okay that's all he did and then he came back to life and okay that fucking sucks Scully was left to search for his ass, carry his unborn child, work with a partner that she first initially did not trust, have to take up the slack for all the monster of the week shenanigans, and still, like, crack open this government conspiracy that's trying to take her unborn baby. But yeah, you know, Mulder just had a really nice rest. So, there you go. And you know what? Um, I don't care. I'm very salty in this episode, okay? But yeah, tell me about how Mulder suffered more. Please do. I'm I'm always eager to hear about how he did. So anyway, um <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sassy today. Actually, I'm not sorry. So then um Scully starts making a scene. Skinner is talking to some people, he goes over there, like he's like, Oh no, I gotta get my daughter. She's she's freaking out. So, um then um uh, there's a knock at the door. No one answers it. And this is where that really dreamlike quality comes in. Uh, you'll see it like in Via Negativa um, where it's like it's that dream quality where like Scully's trying to move quickly but it's like slow. That's good. Uh, no one else answers the door. Like it's like those little eerie touches. Like, you didn't need that crappy late 90s CGI episode. You could have just stuck with that. Like, that's some fantastic storytelling. So then uh, she opens the door. Mulder's there. All the people from the wake are gone. She's like, ha! I knew those people weren't Mulder's friends. Mulder walks in. David Duchovny does some more just sterling acting. Uh, give him all the Emmys, okay? <laughs> God, the man's face is like stone. He's like, and Scully's, like, over here, Jillian's over here, like, crying, like, oh, my God. He's, like, <laughs> like, okay, it's, like, Jillian, this is Jillian. She's, like, oh, 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 like, sexy little tears going down her face. David. Jillian? Oh, David. Okay? <laughs> like, that's exactly what it's like. So then, um, she's, like, Mulder, all these people were, like, in here for your wake. David can't even read the lines. He's just, like, mm, okay, whatever, I want out of this franchise. <laughs> Okay, uh, oh, and because I'm on my salt quest, um, can we talk about how David Duchovny, like, wants to make more X-Files? Every interview you hear him, he's like, oh, I can't wait to make more X-Files. Oh, if only Jillian would come back, we could make more X-Files. And I always say, uh, laughs in 1999. <laughs> Guy has amnesia, right? So then, um, she's like, this isn't right. And then, um... They're like, she's like, we're being digested. And then you see the bad 90s CGI goo effect. And it shows them in the cavern being digested by the fungus. And um, then you see uh, Mulder, like, break out of the ground. And you think they're out. Because the next scene, you see him in Mr. Skinner's office. 
And because Mulder does not understand uh, time skips in uh, media, <laughs> he says to Scully, like, hey, how did we get back in Mr. Skinner's office? And uh, she's like, hmm, I don't know. And so then um, Mulder's like, I'll prove to you this is a dream. And he gets up and he shoots his boss <laughs> because. That's the difference between Mulder and Scully. Like, Scully's going to prove that this is not reality by logic and by uh, intuition and by, you know, good old-fashioned police work. Mulder's going to shoot his boss with a gun. And I gotta say, Mulder saw, tries to solve a lot of his problems through just shooting people. Um, I'm reminded of the end of the episode, Two Fathers, because, you know, season six Mulder is a fantastic human being. He's just going to shoot Cassandra Spender, this old woman. <laughs> like, he's just like, okay, I know the solution. Let's just shoot this old lady, okay? But he's going to shoot, um, he's going to shoot a Skinner and solve all the problems. So anyway, um, he shoots Skinner and this green goo starts coming out of his chest. He's like, I told you I was right, Scully. And she was like, well, you know, I was right first. <laughs> like, Mulder, you would still be in your apartment with your little, uh, stitch alien pet if it wasn't for Scully snapping you out of it, my boy. So. And then you get the next scene and, um, you see, uh, Skinner searching the hills for them. A very cute Skinner moment. He's got a little, a little air mask on because he doesn't want to get, uh, fungus in his lungs. I'd love to see Skinner's trip. Um, Leave a comment. What do you think Mr. Skinner's shroom trip would be? Do you think it would be good? Do you think it would be bad? Do you think it would be neutral? What would happen? I want to know. Uh, anyway, he pulls uh, Mulder out. I love how he pulls Mulder out and just, like, throws him like a bag of sugar. And he's like, she's in there. I know she is. <laughs> Mr. Skinner doesn't play favorites, does he? What is the scene from Arrested Development? And uh, she's like, I treat all of my children equally. And then it's like one hour earlier. And he's like, I don't care for Mulder. <laughs> That's Skinner. So. He, um, he pulls Scully out. They put him in the um, ambulance. I love how when they're carrying them to the ambulance, uh, Scully looks at Skinner and she says, she's like, She's like, the mushrooms. And he's like, it's okay. We got it. Like, my girl Dana Scully. God, what a trooper. Like, she's like, I know I'm dying, but I don't want anyone else to get these spores in their lungs. <laughs> like, Scully has such mom energy. That's such a mom move. She's like, I'm on my deathbed, but I don't want anyone else to suffer. <laughs> so, um, they put him in the ambulance. And there is a very sweet scene where, like, they're riding away, and Mulder, like, reaches for Scully's hand and takes it. And I can almost forget that he was a bag of shit in this episode and this entire season, but I can't quite. Okay, so that was Field Trip. I was very salty in this episode because you know what? I'm recovering from a stomach bug, and I was very salty. Okay, so uh, leave your comments if you love it, if you hate it. Um... I am at raccoons underscore dead on uh, Twitter. I am at just awful X Men art on Tumblr. Uh, leave a comment below here or look for me on Deviant Art if you're one of the two people who uses Deviant Art anymore. I am at dead raccoons. Uh, check out my art. Excuse me, and I will see you later. Watch out for mushrooms. Don't step on them. And whatever you do, do not eat them. Don't go in a cave unless you know what's in that cave. I will see you later. Mwah! Look out for bears.